Radia 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 I'm here with the amazing, stupendous, always ready uh, Radia you're, they, they almost rhymes. And we've talked so much about your name. We've talked so much about your fame and your fortune. We've enjoyed it. And now we're back again. Look at your decked out with the, with the Pokemon. So I was going to ask you about sexy video game characters. And then I realized you are mostly known for your presence in the Pokemon fandom. And therefore, maybe not the best topic. Because it's well, not a, a sexy series per se. Oh, <laughs> there are definitely some very attractive people in the Pokemon series, but even though I'm on a podcast about Pokemon, mm. I was wondering if you brought this up because our last guest we had on, she's a local artist. Her name is Rachel. She is she is a beautiful person inside and out. Ah. But before we go <laughs> further, let us know again the name of your podcast and where to find it. We're already it's, plugging. I love it. it it's very hard to find. It's it's called Poke Problems Podcast. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure the best way to find it because I'm not good at these sorts of things. I'll, I'll find it. I'll put the link in the show notes. So on your podcast, your prolific Pokemon podcast, which has been going on for many years. Yeah, yeah, oh. Six years, seven years? Even I'm not sure. Time. It's before the Switch came out. That scares yeah. me. Yeah, it's That's amazing. a very long time. So good that you're still going. You had a guest on, Rachel, an artist, a local artist in the Boston area. And what mm -hmm. happened? <laughs> so she's she's known mostly for her Genshin Impact art. Speaking of sexy, mm. she has... I was originally drawn to her art because she had a character who I thought looked like Anubis, but it's from Genshin, so I didn't realize who it was. And... She's become very popular with her Genshin art, but when we were talking with her, we somehow, of course, went on a Final Fantasy tangent about all the hot guys in Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> because there are so many attractive, wonderful individuals in the series. I don't know if you have any favorites. Oh, and when it comes to hot men in the Final Fantasy series, it's funny you would bring it up because uh, I saw a debate online. A debate? <laughs> See, okay. Earlier when we were talking about this, mm -hmm. you were talking about sexy video games, and all I could think of was a debate from college. Oh, yeah? Tell me more. So at school, there mm -hmm. were some guys on hall who were rating girls that they put up a picture, and they're like, oh, I like this girl, this girl better. And I'm like, where's the men? Mm. So they printed off some sort of playgirl pictures, and I'm like, I'm not sure about these guys here. Mm. And so I printed off a picture of Sephiroth <laughs> to put in the competition. Was it the like colored pencil drawing of Sephiroth that was originally I, done for the original series? Or was it like a, a sexy? Oh, I bet it, it wasn't was even the a movie. sexy picture. It was just the normal <laughs> picture because this is the two, or, like late 90s, ago. early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then someone else, because I went to a tech school, put up a picture of math equations for what they thought was the same <laughs> that's, that's a lot. And so yeah. this is very upsetting because Sephiroth did not win. Math won. That <laughs> well, that's all I could think it's of. It's all a matter of your preferences, which is, uh, I think, what you're speaking of. The debate I saw online was saying... Yes. Uh, it was, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't want to get into it too much, but there's suddenly an upsurge of people complaining that video games are too feminist and progressive. They're back complaining again, oh. saying uh, women aren't sexy in video games anymore. And I'm like, hmm. uh, I don't know what games are playing. It's very easy to find sexual video games. They're more than ever out there. But they're saying specifically As... Western AAA games are supposed to oh. have sexier women in them. And then they went a step further and said, also, it's not fair because video game men have been made to be sexy for women for years. And the women are getting all the fun with all these sexy video game <laughs> characters. And the men are left out. It was like a, a a men's rights. Where are my sexy women in video? And again, I'm like Overwatch. Uh, like the amount of uh, sexual content related to that game that you can Google if you're in the mood is uh, through the roof. And it's mostly the women in that game. It's it's many you know uh, Street Fighter. To, but again, they were saying like Western only. And they they mentioned Cloud actually. 
Uh, Cloud Street is Fighter, as a as an there. example of a character who is made specifically for the woman's gaze to mm. be attracted to. I'm like, I guess, like he's all right, but there's <gasps> nothing. Well, the Wolf Doctor, <laughs> my co-host on the podcast, she would. So uh, she would well, fight you. Cloud is her favorite. Sephiroth is mine. <laughs> not surprising. Uh, <laughs> you two have a yin and yang to you. So. But just looking at Cloud, like if you never mm. played his game, if you didn't know his story, if you didn't know his kind of stoic, hurt soul that he that he keeps a, a shield up and is lying to himself about who he really is. If it was just a, a, the colored pencil drawing of him from the original, you wouldn't be like hubba hubba. Can't believe th that you'd be like, it's fine. I well, well, you know, enough about what I think. What do you think? <laughs> it, are these guys aesthetically that made for women to be aroused by is that what they're there for these guys i'm not sure i know my opinions are not stereotypical so i don't know most i feel like straight female identifying people i've talked with find cloud overall one of the sexiest characters from the final fantasy series i think he's definitely up there and it's funny, in, in the real world, I will go for more things like someone who looks like they could crush a house, mm. someone <laughs> built of muscles. <laughs> like uh, like Barrett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone yeah. like that. But I know that is not what is typical, that apparently, from what I can tell, according to the internet, mm. is more for men building up other men. So, mm. Mm -hmm. Like muscle I'm goals sure. for men. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'll bring it back to my original question. Is it cloud's character mixed with his design or is it strictly physical like has there ever been a video game character who you didn't care about their story you didn't care oh. about playing as them you're just like give me that man give me just the look <laughs> of that man that's all i want i don't care about because that's what what guys do with with video games a lot they're like yeah. i see huh. a still picture of a video game character's butt and then i'm like i'm buying the game they're like, I don't know. Now I feel like you're going back to Tracer. <laughs> Once it shifted, there was a whole thing, right? And yes. they flattened her butt a little bit, and then people demanded, like, bring her full size butt back. Right now, there's this game called Stellar Blade that it's just her butt that people cared about at first. And then they decided, maybe I want to play it. And they're actually using this game, they're propping it up as a symbol of the way games should be because it's pure objectification and they love it. And I don't know of women to do that as much, but I don't want to be sexist and, and be wrong too. So has there ever been a time You're, where you've just been like that volleyball hunk in that game? Are we going to dead or alive? Are we? <laughs> Maybe we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's kind of what I'm going for. Like, you know, those dead or alive volleyball fans. Some of them love the backstories, but a lot of them are just like- I love DOA. I feel so called out here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a, a, a fun uh, Japanese, uh, uh, how do you explain it? To me, it's like a pina colada in Japan, the, the Dead or Alive series. It's like pure junk food, but it's it's fun. It's uh, fun. It's yeah. just, it's like, I feel like that's why a lot of the fighting game series have more of this over-sexualization. Like mm. you're, you talk about Street Fighter mm -hmm. and then look at more recently, the new Tekken games. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anyone who could not look at Jin and be like that is an attractive piece of man <laughs> yeah is that there. right is Jin made for yeah. i don't know if he's made you mm. know for women but he's you know a great character i don't know that much about the tekken backstory as mm -hmm. i'm more of a mortal Kombat person mm -hmm. but i mean in playing the game you're like oh hey here's a cool guy i'll try him out a little bit and see how he plays <laughs> Is that a euphemism? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's so, just no. uh, so you see him and you're attracted to him as a character you're going to play as. But do you immediately like feel hot and under the collar when you see that? Uh, Kazuma, what's his last name? Kazama? I see. This is this tells you that I don't know enough about the Tekken lore. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even know. Hihachi is the the granddad, and then there's uh, the the one in the middle there, uh, <laughs> and then there's Jin. That's all I remember right now. And I think there might be a fourth one soon. They're they're gonna keep going. Uh, but yeah, is it immediate? Uh, I like, I feel like mm -hmm. I don't know. I've only really gotten the feel super strong in some of the newer games. 
I don't know if it's the graphics, but if you've played Final Fantasy 15 at all, mm. like all of the main characters in that are, you could pick from any of them. They're all, they all, you're talking about backstories versus just straight up looks, but they all have great personalities with looks. Like they're all endearing in their own sort of ways. Mm -hmm. You've got like abs, gladiolus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Noctis, your you know your goth boy. You know, oh, Prompto. I mixed up my fifteen into my. 16. Oh, your yeah. I was thinking of sixteen with Clive, 16, and it's all kind yeah. of Games of Thrones ish. Uh, fifteen, they're <laughs> like the the like a boy band. They're like yeah, cute boy bands in a car. And it's interesting because like a lot of the Final Fantasy games, they have a huge diverse list of characters, but like. This one, the core is just, you know, four guys. So I'm not sure who this is supposed to appeal to, like, mainly, but I, I think it's great. Mm. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> it might be that those dudes were right, but I don't think it is those dudes who are saying these characters are made for the woman's gaze, so to speak. Yeah. But I feel like it's I'm a sure. relatively, if so, it's a relatively recent phenomenon, like you said for the male gaze we're going back to laura croft we're going back to ps1 <laughs> uh, or even think about things in the arcade like when you mm. played racing games like off-road you always have the trophy girl yeah who's like cheering you on and things like that absolutely going back as far as the first metroid it was a reward oh. <laughs> to see samus in a bikini a little pixel bikini back then eight bit bikini baby <laughs> yeah it was uh, us uh, teenage boys or preteen boys were were wowed by the maturity uh, of uh, the bikini shot. I just thought it was um, a cute outfit. I was like, oh, she's got a great new outfit. <laughs> and that kind of shows how for for you trying to decode, yeah. is this the made for men to get all hot and bothered? Uh, you, know, you don't get hot and bothered by it, so you don't necessarily detect it. Likewise, I don't detect it when a male character is specifically made for a woman's gaze to enjoy. Like you have to decode it for me can you think of can you hmm. think of the oldest game that had a male character in it that you think was designed either well as you've said you don't want to try to read minds you don't know if they were designed to be know. sexy but it worked regardless <laughs> if they meant it can you think of like a super nintendo game like simon belmont is he, oh is he a hunk in the, I in mean, the he's Super definitely Castlevania? a hunk, but if you're going through the Belmont family, mm -hmm. everyone in the Belmont family, as the Wolf Doctor from the podcast, Simon says, you know, there's even a Leon Belmont. If mm -hmm. your name is Leon in a video game, you are automatically attractive. That's what it seems <laughs> like. You've got Resident Evil Leon, right. you know, the Fire Emblem, Pokemon Leon. There's just a I host of I different characters. I don't know if I know about Pokemon Leon. Who's Pokemon <gasps> Leon? Uh, so, I'm, yeah. My my boyfriend, uh, who dresses up as Leon, he's a great character. He's probably, in my opinion, the only champion who rivals Cynthia in popularity, but he's an overall attractive, fun, nice, endearing guy. Hmm. Which which game did he first appear in? He first know? came out in Sword and Shield. Oh, that's I'm behind the signs. I yeah, played it's through okay. all of Generation Five. Really, oh, really didn't get into Generation 6. Generation 7 looked okay, but since I was so turned <laughs> off by 6, I didn't give it a chance. 8, I think, is Sword and Shield, if I remember correctly. Maybe, I, yes. So many. And I've been playing there are through... so many. I have so many. And 10 is coming pretty soon. And then oh, there's no. like 8.5, which is the Arceus Legends, which has a few new Pokemon. That I've played. Uh, and Scarlet and Violet is the latest. And now they're doing another Legends coming soon. Z to A, I think. That's, I'm very happy about that. That's the only thing I wished for before that Pokemon Direct. Yeah. A sequel to Legends Arceus and we got it. Ah, oh, fun. Uh, <laughs> you know, you made a good choice choosing Pokemon all those years ago in the, in the 3DS days even to center your podcast subject on because it's never going to end. It's like life. <laughs> you think it's over, but then you're back. It's resurrected once again and more popular than ever. It goes on forever. Yeah, that's fun. Well, any uh, closing statements, any final thoughts, anything you wish you had said to help me understand what makes these video game men sexy? I know clothes that are tight, but not too tight. Uh, a little bit soft, but a little bit not the soft. The clothes can be tight. I don't know who's telling you not too tight. 
the they should be as tight as possible. Clo- well, it went back to Sephiroth with the open chest clavicle uh, on full display. And if you, if you play him in Smash, you also have the shirtless option, which I it think really is the is. best option. And, you know, <laughs> you're talking about what makes, you know, someone or even something sexy in a video game. I think mm. a voice, mm. which is you know, newer. You know, we grew up without as much voice acting, but yeah. whoever voices him in Smash Brothers, like spot on perfect that nice deep resonating voice i think mm-hmm. it can really add a lot to the character mm-hmm. i am feeling though that because it was hard for you to dig back to the super <laughs> nintendo days and i know you know your super nintendo games so it's not as though you're <laughs> unable to summon one up in your mind my feeling is that video game men didn't start getting sexy till like even Ooh. ps2 ps2 ps1 can you think of one sexy like when you play final fantasy 7 on the ps1 that but, cloud, that bundle of polygons, that bunch of boxes <laughs> taped together, he's not exactly turning heads. I, I don't think. But you correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I, I will never forget seeing the trailer for Final Fantasy VII in theaters, which Whoa. was, I think, the first time I'd ever seen a video game trailer in theaters. Mm-hmm. But if you're going back to Super Nintendo, like the first Final Fantasy game I played, Final Fantasy IV, I know... I thought both Kane and Edge, I'm not sure if you played it, but oh, sure, sure. they're both quite attractive, you know, characters. And Kane is one who's, he's, you know, fully armored. So it's like, all you get from him is his personality. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's just these little pixels, all of them as well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say in the portrait artwork, the Amano portrait artwork, you get a sense of their realistic appearance. And then the supplemental yeah. production artwork, but in the actual game, they're basically babies. They're just violent babies with swords and, and armor <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, due to technical constraints and other reasons. So you can dig back to the Super Nintendo for a sexy I man, can. but it's also their presence and their, it's less their physicality. I feel like the physicality and, as you mentioned, the voice acting, that didn't really kick in fully until PS2 and and like Zidane from Final Fantasy and um, uh, oh. Leon, is he? He's not <laughs> he hot. So great. No, I was just thinking. I was like, oh, oh, I you're like in, playing in that game, now. and I was like, oh, this guy is so great. Oh, you know, he's he's got a tail. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> oh, I mixed up my Zidane and my uh, Final oh, Fantasy Ten. Of? Zidane is Final Fantasy. Oh, you're thinking nine. of um, <laughs> what's yeah. his name? The Final T- Fantasy Ten guy, Titus slash Titus. T- Titus Titus. That's right. That's what I was thinking of. He was definitely designed to be uh, like a summer fling type hunk, oh, you know, with his open. Uh, he's got and like here a- I'm going for Waka. See, I'm telling you, I make all the crazy choices. <laughs> <laughs> Waka's the kind of spiky haired uh, blitz ball guy. Yeah. Kind of so. the, the dorky but lovable jock. Dork jock? <laughs> is that what he is? I, don't know I could definitely see that being a statement for him. Okay, it's been a, it's been a long time. So I think we got to the bottom of it. Maybe you can dig back past PS One for characters who are attractive in their concept, but when it comes to just looking at a a, a man and thinking like that's beefcake, it might you gotta you might go have... to all those fighting games and Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's come, see those outfits. <laughs> The outfits make a difference too. That's the thing with men. It's often just like, well, she's nude and therefore she's sexy. <laughs> like they don't think about style or, or fashion uh, as much or as much as I would like uh, in order to make it really more about the person's full personality and not just the curvature of their globes and whatnot. That's what they're talking about. The curvature they're... of the pecs. <laughs> you, you talked about nerfing Tracer. Just yep. think about poor Snake in the Smash Brothers series, like coming from Metal Gear and in some older games, he had a, a quite, you know, gratuitous booty. <laughs> In the, the newest Smash game, he's not as juicy. Yeah, they flattened <laughs> that ass just severely. He's still he got... was too powerful. <laughs> they nerfed his ass. I mean, if you saw much. those cheeks clapping, or if he sat on you, who knows what could happen? <laughs> I wish they would lean all the way into that. They they just don't. I don't even know what Konami's doing with that series. But if they did like a sexy Metal Gear Boys Thong Edition game, that would, that would, <laughs> would fly off the shelves. That's who their audience is. These days, as far as I, can. I would play that game, you would play that game, and I would support yes. you in it. I'd pre order it for you and present it <laughs> You're to you. You're kind, yeah, you, you deserve only the best. Well, I think I 
did hit record, right? I'm so drunk. I'm not uh, sure. <laughs> I'm not actually drunk. I'm, uh, <laughs> drunk, uh, Jonathan, metaphorically. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we will go ahead and wrap up. Any any final words and any final plugs you want to throw in before we call it a night? I just want to thank you for having me on. I enjoyed listening to your podcast. You've helped open me up to some games that I don't have time to play. I know. So I try and vicariously absorb them all. Yeah. That's the only way we can do it these days, right? With so much going on. And people can find you doing so many things. Yeah, Are you still acting I'm, and, and showing up? And <laughs> I'm doing too many things. This yeah. past few weekends at PAX, I was on four panels. I ran a cosplay meetup at Anime Boston. I was the social events coordinator running a whole bunch of game shows and i'm also starting rehearsals for eurydice wow nearby, up in newburyport a play and i still don't know what i'm doing with my life at all <laughs> <laughs> you know things are happening but the overall direction where is it where are you going to land still unknown are you going to be the next meryl mm-hmm. streep are you going to be the next satoru iwata could be both could be neither. why not both why not both why not be the first to be a Academy Award winning president of Nintendo. Why not? <laughs> or just fly away to the moon and never come back. <laughs> that note. Uh, uh, Radia, thanks so much for, for being on the show. It's always such a pleasure. Well, thanks for having me, Jonathan. Jonathan.